project, I'm using a rock that I created using a mold from the Happy Dotting Company, black paint, white paint, half inch painter's tape, silver mica powder, resin, and printable vinyl. So let's get started. So to start off with, I did base paint my rock with Mars Black. I used an airbrush gun, but you don't have to. I then mixed up some uh, resin, starting with part B, then adding part A to it. It mixes up better if you do it that way. Then I added some silver mica powder to my resin. I only have about a tablespoon of resin made up. It's a very small amount. So now I'm going to add that mixture of mica powder and resin to my rock and I'm going to do a thin coat over the top and sides. You don't need to worry about the bottom. We're just doing the top and the sides. I need to add a little bit more resin, but you can see I mixed up just a very small amount. And we're going to spread that evenly over the rock, making sure to get the sides really well. I have a little bit of debris, something stuck in my resin so get that out and then I'm going to take my finger and swipe it diagonally across the rock this is going to put the mica powder into a pattern and then I'm going to take my blowtorch and torch out any of the bubbles making sure there there's no flaws or imperfections in the resin and then I'm going to let that dry for 24 hours now that it's completely dry, I'm going to take some rubbing alcohol and I'm just going to wipe my rock down to remove any of the oils from my hands. And then once that is clean and dry, I'm taking half inch painter's tape and I'm going to start at one side in a diagonal fashion and I'm going to tape off the whole rock. And I started off, I'm not taping the complete side because I want that side to be black. So I'm just taping off the part of the top that's going to be affected. And I was using an X-Acto knife in the beginning. This became a major pain really fast. So I stopped doing that. And then my tape got all messed up. It was just a complete mess. So then I just started hand tearing it, which was a lot easier. And I'm going to go through and just tape off the entire rock. It's okay if you have gaps in between your tape, but you don't want them to overlap and you don't want the gaps to be big. And if you do have a gap, make sure that from right to left, the gap is even. But <clears throat> nobody's going to get out and measure your stripes. So... If your stripes are slightly off uh, with a little bit wider gap, it's not a big deal. You can see some of my mine, the tape is much tighter together than, than other spots. Uh, I'm not even worried about it. So now that it's... I'm, completely taped off. I'm just wrapping the tape around the edges. Um, I'm sorry it's off screen, but I'm just folding them over the sides and making sure that my stripes are even, that my gaps are even. So doing any kind of repositioning that I need to do at that at that moment. But you can still see that my gaps are un, they're uneven, but they are even from right to left. Now I'm going to take off every other piece of tape and then I am, I'm re-sticking the tape to my tape roll because I'm so frugal that it pains me to just throw away tape that I've only used for five minutes. So I'm actually re-taping it back to the roll and I'll use it further down the road sometime on a project. <clears throat> so I spend a few minutes fussing with this tape to get it back on the roll. It's ridiculous, but... I just can't throw it away. So now that it's completely taped off, and you want to make sure it's taped good on the top so that when you go, we're going to paint white stripes, and you want to try to prevent 
paint getting underneath that tape. It still does a little bit, but we can clean that up easily because this rock has been resined. So I'm taking my airbrush and I'm using just titanium white. And this is Liquitex titanium white that I thin down to put into my airbrush gun. Uh, but you can use a paintbrush. You could do paint daubers. It would probably even be faster if you did because the airbrush puts such a thin layer of paint on. It takes several minutes of me going over it multiple times so that it doesn't look splotchy. And I'm also airbrushing at a funny angle because I view, I record with my camera looking straight down on top of my rock. This is not how you would normally airbrush. You would want your <clears throat> canvas or rock in this case to be in a vertical position to airbrush uh, correctly. But for recording purposes, I have it laying horizontally down on the surface. So my gun's at a funny angle. So it takes... It just takes a little bit more time because my gun's at a weird angle. I did try to use that paper towel to block off that one corner that I want to stay black that doesn't have tape on it, trying to prevent some overspray. I got overspray on it anyway, but it doesn't matter because we are going to clean up any of the imperfections and overspray with alcohol. So you can see the rock is splotchy, so I'm still just trying, I'm adding more layers until I build up enough paint to where it, it's opaque and you can't see the black background through it. The thing about the airbrush is that it gives you a flawless finish, which I really like. I like brush strokes when I'm painting a subject before these backgrounds, I like for them to be smooth. So now I'm taking a heat gun. Uh, you could use an air uh, hair blow dryer. Um, I like this little, this is an embossing heat gun. I like it because it's small and I can keep it at my desk and it doesn't take up a lot of space. And now I'm peeling off my my tape. Now the tape that's been airbrushed, I'm not going to save. And it did peel up some of my black paint. This is, this paint did not have resin on top of it. It's not peeling up resin. It's just where I didn't get the resin all the way underneath the rock. It's peeling up the black paint there. That's not a big deal. I'll just go back and touch that up later. And now that we've got all the tape off, I'm going to take alcohol and a cotton swab and just clean up any areas where paint did get underneath that tape. Just a couple of little areas that I need to clean up here. And then there's the overspray that I need to clean up. The one thing nice about painting on a resin rock is that the paint comes off very easy without damaging the resin. So for the butterflies that are coming up, I got on Pixabay and I found some blue butterflies, um, some with the wings open and some with the wings folded, uh, folded up. And then I imported those into a Word program, made them different sizes, and I printed them out on printable vinyl that I got off of Amazon. And I use my Cricut machine to cut these, but you could hand cut these out. It's not, not difficult at all. And since it's such a simple pattern, there wouldn't be a lot of fussy cutting going on. So you definitely don't need a Cricut or a Silhouette or something like that to cut these out. You just print out your design and then just hand cut it out of the vinyl. And then it, it's basically like a sticker and you just stick it onto your rock. And I'm using different size butterflies in different positions placed in a random pattern on my rock. After I get the stickers all down, 
I did add another layer of resin on top, which I didn't I didn't realize my camera was not recording at the time. Um, and I also, when I resined it, I also sprinkled a little bit of holographic glitter, just a pinch of holographic glitter across the top, just to add a little bit more of a sparkle to the rock. <clears throat> and add one more butterfly, and we will get to see what the finished results are. And you'll be able to see the glitter in this finished rock here in a second. You just want to make sure that they're stuck on there pretty good before you resin. And there is the finished rock. And remember that my rocks are always available over on my Etsy shop. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share my video. I really appreciate your support, and I will see you in the next video.